Well, good morning, everybody. It's so great to be with you this morning. Welcome to everybody that's online. And uh, put, clap hand, your hands for one another. And, and for everybody that's watching, it's, uh, it's wonderful to be together and hear the, the word of God. I was going to tell you a little story right up front here. Um, I have a beautiful little grandson. I have uh, uh, five beautiful little uh, granddaughters. My grandson, we were out at the park the other day, and I, I was reminded about the universal language the universal language. And um, him and I met a little boy by the name of Sahib who uh, didn't necessarily speak his language, but we enjoyed the universal language of laughter. Literally as we, I got them a handful of rocks and him, my grandson, first of all, to one at a time, let them slide down the slide and then I would let them hit me and I would jump and laugh like it hurt me and he laughed his head off like a gut laughter. And so Sahib joins in, so I had to get rocks for him, and the two of them side by side, sliding rocks down the slide and laughing their heads off at the silly old guy at the end that was laughing every time they did it. And they both had, and so we had a, a wonderful time. Universal language, universal language. Let's spread some love and some joy. Let's laugh with people, okay, and smile at them and say hello and take the opportunity. Um, the message that I'm going to share with you today is uh, part two of the message that I preached last week called Lean In. This is part two of Lean In. And um, we talked about a crazy storm that uh, the Apostle Paul and 270 odd people were on a ship and, and, uh, and it ended up uh, um, running aground and just the whole story of it and how how fascinating it is that all those people groups that were in that ship, they went through a, a horrendous storm together, and though they were so segregated at the end, they ended up bonding because of the storm, and they ended up having to pull together because of a storm. And it's amazing what storms do. And sometimes in the storm, we start canceling out on one another Let's not cancel people. Remember somebody else that's in the hold of the boat, and his name is Jesus, and he's sleeping, not really alarmed at the storm. We're not going to cancel Jesus either, but rely on him. We talked about Proverbs, about trusting in the Lord with our, all of our heart, not leaning on our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledging him. And he said, I'm going to make your path straight. Well, we're going to talk about leaning in today. And as we talk about leaning in, we're going to talk about another kind of storm. We're going to talk, talk about the storms of our own making that occur, occur in life. To quote a friend of mine, we're quite capable to make a great big pile of dog uh, stuff in the middle of our families, in the middle of our lives, for the rest of everybody else to step in. We're quite capable of that. And so I want to Go right to Scripture. I'm, we've, you finished reading the book of Acts, right, as we've studied this. And I'm going to go and grab a story out of Acts chapter 20, verse 7 to 11. And it's a story about a guy falling out a window. And you're like, oh, yeah, right. I remember that Sunday when you were preaching about this. And you mentioned, yeah, I don't know why this is in here. And, you know, some guy falls asleep in the window, falls down dead, and then gets raised to life. Why is that there? This is the story today. Let me read it to you. It says, on the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, he kept on talking until midnight. I, I plan to talk till 3 p.m. today myself. I thought that was a little shorter, a little break for you. But at any rate, uh, verse 8 says, there were many lamps in the upstairs room uh, where they were meeting. Seated in the window was a young man named Eutychus. Eutychus, so if you're searching for a name to call a, a new child, there's one for you, Eutychus. Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. And when he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man, put his arms around him, don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. And then he went upstairs again and broke bread 
and ate after, ta- ate after talking until daylight. He left, so he kept going after midnight. Kind of like, hey, guy falls out the window. He hits the ground. He's dead. Paul goes out, stretches over him, makes him come alive by God's power. Yeah, I think I'll go eat something now and then go back to speaking. And um, we kind of look at a story like this and go, I don't know. Yeah, I know. I told you when I referred to it last time, I said, that's so that you know, don't fall asleep in church. Because, you know, you never know what could happen. But you see, we have to ask ourselves the question, why was Eutychus sleeping in a windowsill? It's not exactly leaning in to what's going on, the message that's being spoken, the farewell message, the the perhaps one-off you're going to hear from the Apostle Paul as he's traveling throughout the region and the area. You may not see him again, dude. Like, pay attention. What's going on? He's not exactly engaged, not exactly valuing what's being said. He's not exactly leaning on every important word that Paul is preaching from the precious word of God. Oh, he showed up. That should be enough. He showed showed up. We showed up. Bless you, Eutychus. You showed up, but you didn't lean in. You fell out the window, and now you're dead. Showing up isn't enough. Showing up is not enough. And you see, like Eutychus, if we aren't leaning in, we are in danger of falling, maybe even to our death. The Bible talks about we should be careful lest we fall. And let me say this, if, if your experience in life, you have fallen and have experienced a recovery from that fall, or maybe you have fallen and you just happen to be here to hear this message, I, I want to say to you today that, that this Jesus that we love and preach and, and, and honor and serve and say, saying all this is for you, he's the one that was laid out. And he was stretched out and, and he was crucified and he died for us so that we could live. And if you have fallen, if, if you fall into a place of pain and difficulty and you, feel, you've, you know you're separated from God, listen, like, like this miracle that took place, it's not too late. You're here. If you're hearing me, you're not dead. You're not dead in your sin and transgressions. You're not dead. You're not too far along. It's not over. There's hope. In a hopeful hopeful God and and, and in a resurrection life in Jesus. But we need to pay attention. We need to pay attention. Paul threw himself on Eutychus. He put his arms around him. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, verse 14 to 16, it says, wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. It says, be careful then how you live. It's talking to you and I. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. The days are evil. The days are evil. Wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead. And it's it's speaking to those that, that, that don't know God and to those that have walked away from God and maybe have known God and walked away from God. And it says, wake up, sleeper. Come awake. Come awake. I'm appealing to you. God of heaven by his Holy Spirit is appealing to your heart. Saying, wake up. Wake up. I'm here. I'm real. I'm speaking into your heart. I'm calling you. I love you. I have a plan for your life. And it's not to die, but it's to have everlasting life through faith in my son, Jesus Christ, who died on the sin, to to pay the price for your sin so you wouldn't have to die. That's the gospel. And that's what this story is telling us. Oh, there's, the, the world is evil. There's storms enough. Somebody say there's storms enough. I mean, you're talking about valleys and mountains and all these things. But you see, when we don't lean into God, when we don't lean into what's being said, when we don't lean into the, the truth of God's word, when we don't lean into the word of God, when we don't lean into good counsel, when we don't lean in, we're sitting on potential storms of our own making. Now, I want to talk about some of these potential storms because what happens is that, is that when we make the storms, it's, it's indicative of an, of an independence. I can do this? Yes, you can. I have ability? Yes, you do. Yes, I do. And it's us leaning on our own leading, not leaning on the leading of God 
who really wants us to surrender and say, Lord, you take the wheel of my life. You see, when we choose to sit or park on the windowsill of fate, we're really at risk of storms. And many of them are the storms that we create because we're the ones that choose to sit in the window, which isn't really a great place to sit, let alone be at risk of falling asleep and falling completely. Why do we do that? I guess it's because we're human and we don't make some good choices sometimes. And it causes a lot of problems. And it creates a storm not only in our own lives, but in the lives of the people that are all around us. So if you're not leaning in, potentially you're leaning away. If you're not leaning in, then potentially you're drifting into slumber. Perhaps falling asleep, maybe being lulled asleep by a lot of noise or by absolute exhaustion of pressure and stress and tension and anxiousness in your life. Lulled to sleep, lulled to the point of not being aware, not alarmed by anything, not concerned, but as Eutychus, sinking, sinking into a deep sleep. What a precarious bed that we make for ourselves sometimes. Do you know that Eutychus' name, it means fortunate. It means fortunate or well-fated. Fortunate or well-fated. You see, if... I would say we're very fortunate. We're very fortunate if we get to hear the gospel, read the gospel, hear the word of God the way we do. We're very fortunate, whatever point we are in our life, to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. If Eutychus really, really wanted to catch Paul's critical farewell message, he would have leaned in. And we ask ourselves, well, why is this story here? I, I believe it's here to warn us of the dangers of not leaning in, of not hungering and thirsting for God's right ways, for righteousness. I believe it's here to warn us to be careful so we don't fall, so that we don't take unnecessary risks of self-dependency and selfishness and relying on our own ability and ways, but leaning on God's. There's a lot of threats. There's a lot of threats to our faith, and I, I want to talk about a few of them, just mention some of them, and uh, hopefully as I walk through these, you'll get the picture of the need to lean in. Because these threats that exist they exist like that open window. We're very vulnerable if we're left and not aware of these things. And obviously, there's a response in each of these as to what we can do. Number one is to lean in. To lean in means to be on guard about error. Yeah, I said error. Things that aren't true. To be on guard about error. Lean in to be on guard about the fact that some things that are communicated are not true, but they are false. In 2 Peter 3, verse 17, it says, Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away out the window <laughs> by error. The error of law the lawless and then fall, it says, from your secure position. Your secure position, yeah, your secure position in Christ. You mean, you mean, you mean? Is that what you're saying? Is that I could be, that's what it says. Exactly. That, and, and the deception of error as to why we would want to believe it and follow it, if we're not, if we're not paying attention, if we're not being careful about what goes in, we can easily be deceived. Eutychus sat in the window quite vulnerable, whereas he could have been content to sit on the floor where he would have been safe and certainly leaning in and getting the whole message. 
but you see it reveals and it can reveal an attitude of our own heart about maybe not wanting to lean in, not wanting to be instructed, not wanting to know the difference between uh, the, 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 uh, the original and a counterfeit. We want to know. We want to know. So lean in. We need to lean in and be on guard. And if we're not, the potential and the danger is here, just like it was for Eutychus. You followed the window, literally carried away, even from a secure position. This should be very sobering to us, that we take the word of God and the importance of the word of God and truth that we get to hear that important so that we can discern what isn't truth and what isn't right. Number two is, is to lean in means to not be self deceived to not be self-deceived not be self-deceived it says in james verse 1 to 22 1 to 25 don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves watch watch the language here okay do you see it this is somebody who's just oh, i'm here i'm hearing it okay don't just merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves do what it says do what it says. Like it is, it, what does it profit you? What would it profit you to listen to the word of God but not do what it says? I, I, I'm not sure how God in heaven really looks down on us sometimes. And I, I don't mean this as a criticism because I'm, I'm in the same boat with you. Why is it? Why is it that we can hear and not obey? when we need to obey. It says, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Conversely, not blessed. Not blessed. Won't be blessed in what you do. That's not great. I want to be blessed in what I do. The key would be not just listening to it, but doing it. And here we have Paul preaching his farewell sermon, okay? Um, he, was, he was definitely long-winded. It's really clear. He's talking on and on. It says on and on and on. You know, it's like somebody saying, oh, no, Pastor Mitch, he's just saying he talk on and on sometimes. Um, he's talking on and on till midnight, okay? Then he also talks again till daybreak. And the hearers, notice this, the hearers were willing to listen. They were willing to listen. When you're willing to listen, it means you also want to know what's being said because you want to take it home with you and you want to put it to work and apply it to your life. You know, otherwise you leave. You leave. I'll be so bold as to say this. Why go to church and hear a message or why go online and watch a message if you're not, and, and you're here in the preaching, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit by a person called by God to preach and to hear it and not put it into work, and yet it feels really good to hear it, but it feels a million times better, trust me, to actually apply it, because then you see the fruit of it. it it's a waste of time. It, it's, it's sitting on a window. It's falling out. Why? Well, I like hanging out with the people. Yeah, Absolutely. There's wonderful things. But God is so committed to our personal change. We need to be equally committed to applying the word of God in our lives. The hearers are willing to listen. Eutychus didn't lean into the weighty things that Paul spoke of, but he fell into a deep, deep sleep. So is this, is this a God-designed warning in Scripture? To all people to take heed to hearing the word preached and to make use of it? I believe so. Thank you very much. How about, here's a heavy one for you. How about we see it as an evil thing for us not to esteem the word of God and not to listen to it and apply it? If it's there to save you, we should, we, should, we should observe it like precious, sweeter than honey from the honeycomb for my life. There's the answer. 
I want it. Blessed and happy are they hunger and thirst. Blessed and happy. Number three. To lean in. It's quiet in here. I hear crickets. To lean in means to be alert and sober-minded. Eutychus was not very alert. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you know, the old Bob. You know, you ever get that? It's like, huh. Ah. The moment you snore, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm awake now. <laughs> it's like I heard my own snoring. How's that happen? Anyways. <clears throat> I don't snore. Yes, you do. Yeah, I know. I heard it. <laughs> Woke me up. It happens to me. 1 Peter 5, verse 6 to 11. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Amen. But be alert and of sober mind because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So it says, resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings through... And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him to be power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Be alert. Be sober. The lion is walking quietly. And you're kind of asleep, maybe. And you're not going to hear him. Because you're not aware or not worried that maybe in your slumber he might eat you. You really need to be of sober mind. It's interesting, the proverb says, oh yeah, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands and rest and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Oh, rest is great, absolutely. But we're talking about, we're in a battle. And um, you don't want to be left in a place where you're vulnerable to destruction, vulnerable to, to falling, because it just doesn't happen right away. It's like we gradually fall into asleep. We gradually become resistant because we don't pay attention and don't place the value. It probably starts with not paying, va placing adequate value, and then we, we don't place adequate value, and then we don't apply it, and then we start doing things on our own, and it becomes dangerous. And it says scarcity comes on us like an armed man. <gasps> All of a sudden, whoosh, out the window as it were. Sober and alert. Sober and alert and aware of the devil's schemes. Number four, leaning means, leaning in means being aware and also fighting demonic schemes. Demonic schemes. Yeah, I'm telling you all of them today. Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 13, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power... Be strong in that, says to you. Put on the full armor of God. I'm not going to get into all the armor of God, but you should know Ephesians 6. You should know Ephesians 6. We've taught it over the years continuously. If you don't know it, go and turn to it and take it home and study it, okay? It says what the armor is because you're in a battle and this is what you put on and this is how you're strong and mighty in the Lord, okay? Said, so put on the full armor of God so that you can take your so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Okay? Putting on the armor is leaning in, okay? So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. All right? For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. 
don't leave off the breastplate of righteousness and have a spear thrust through your middle. You, you can't go without one piece. You can't not have the helmet on. You're vulnerable. Lean into all of it. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, and this is all part of this sobriety and this awareness and sober-mindedness and know your adversary and know how he works and knows how he plays upon your mind with thoughts and ideas that are contrary to God's will and will take the word of God and will twisty-woo. You're like a twist-tie. Oh, a twist-tie still works after it's twisted. Word of God does a little bit, but it leads you way astray. Way astray, only a degree off. And by the time you go a mile, you're, you're off. You're off. You're off. So put, know his schemes. Put on the full armor on. So the day of evil comes, you, can't, you would be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. And it goes on, stand firm, and then it starts talking about what that armor is. That's up to us. You see, because what happens is that if... If we're not leaning in this way, in this area, in this spiritual battle that we're on, we'll get pushed off. You saw that, right? Easy. We get pushed off. You're sitting in the window. <sighs> ah! <laughs> That's illustrative, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm a sound maker. Anyways, you see, here's... here's Here's kind of like the difference. Eutychus didn't suffer from Paul's message of appeal and warning and truth and vitality of the word of God. He didn't suffer from that word of God that should bring a conviction and should change the mind of the hearer. He didn't suffer from that internal struggle of hearing the Holy Spirit and obeying. He didn't struggle. He slept. We can be in church and we, cannot, we can be in such a state of mind that we, we go, well, that was a nice word. Thank you. It was great. Great. High five. Thank you. Appreciate it. Not my word. Not my power. Not my abilities. Not me. I would say, Holy Spirit, guide me. It's your word. And, you know, it's interesting. And I love this about God. That when you are in a local church, what God does is he gives the word of God to those that are feeding in the local church and they bring under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit a message, a type of food for that specific flock, that church of people. I used to be a farmer, okay? I used to work on a dairy farm and um, used to put all the food out for the cattle, used to make sure there was water, make sure there was grain. And, and we, would, we would supplement to make sure they were getting what they needed. You can be sure in a, in a, in a God-fearing, Bible-believing church that the pastors are going to hear from God and are going to preach the word of God that you need to hear. And there's going to be food for you. Why? So be careful lest you fall. Eutychus fell. This Satan, your adversary, he can only do what you give him permission to do. It's interesting Side note, some expositors uh, would say that this little occurrence by the, with Eutychus was God permitted Satan. Satan decided, they say Satan was trying to cause a huge disturbance. So you think about the importance of this message. Paul's farewell message, Paul's last message, Paul communicating to them. Uh, in this assembly, to maybe even bring reproach upon Paul in the preaching of his message. The devil does that. He does that with preachers. You believe what he said. <laughs> My goodness. What a loser. To, to insinuate that, that, that I need to change. I mean, come on. I love you guys. I need to change too. Um, anyways, number five. Number five. To lean in means to live by the Spirit, not the flesh. How's everybody doing? You good? To lean in would mean to live by the Spirit and not by the flesh, okay? It, it was sleeping time, granted. 
Okay, it was after dinner. I mean, the after dinner sleepies are coming on, you know, like the easy chair mentality is, is, is pressing on the old, you know, like, ah, I just want to, I want to, I want to be there, you know. And um, it's an easy time for the flesh to take over, I believe is a picture here. In the original language, when it talks about this, it says that Eutychus was carried away with it. It, it intimates that he strove against it, but was overpowered by it, his own flesh and lack of of attention. Let it not be us that that be the case. You see, when we operate in the flesh, we move farther and farther away. It's interesting to not be noticed. We go away over to the window. We sit out on the outside edge because after all, we don't want anybody to see what we're doing because if, if we're serving God and we know God, there's a sense of conviction of the Holy Spirit. We're wrong already. We're just not repenting and turning from our sin. We're already way out at the window, not on the floor leaning in. Please hear what I'm saying. Please hear what I'm saying. Flesh, our flesh would be like, as the Proverbs 3 scripture says, leaning on our own understanding. So it says in Romans 13 verse 14, it says to us, rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus. And then don't think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Living in the spirit, Spirit it tunes you in to be quick and aware and to discern even your own thoughts in the moment about entertaining an idea that's contrary to God's will and his ways. Why is the mind such a playground, such a battleground for the enemy to come along and, and sow fear and sow ideas to cause us to be anxious and begin to doubt and what's going to happen? I wonder if this will take place. And he wants to push us out the window. He wants us to gradually start thinking that. So we start thinking the next layer. We start thinking, well, that feels really good. That's really what I want to do. And then we go to the next level where we start entertaining. And it's like, it's like making coffee. It's like, it's like, okay, well, I just went to the shelf and I pulled the bag down, you know, and I opened the bag. I smelled the bag. I smelled inside. Man, that smells good. Coffee. I love coffee. <sighs> Oh, 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 pour some in the grinder, maybe. Uh, should I grind it? <laughs> I'm going to grind it because I love coffee. <laughs> coffee pot's over there. I don't need it. I don't. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go to the coffee pot, and I pour the grounds in there. Press the button, press the button, press the button. Turn the fire on, turn the fire on. I turned the fire on. Now I'm making coffee. I can't believe it. I'm making coffee. You're all looking at me like, what, what the heck are you trying to illustrate? Don't drink coffee. No, that's not what I'm saying. Don't start at that point of thought where you give the devil an opportunity to lead you down the road of what your flesh desires. Because trust me, I've done it. It only takes a few steps and you're headlong. And then all of a sudden you're out the window. That's what I mean. You understood the illustration. Galatians 5, 16 says, so I say, walk by the Spirit, and you won't gratify the desires of the flesh. And you won't walk by the Spirit, and you won't. So here we've got, you know the story, you know, Samson and Delilah, right? And so he's, his head is laying, Samson, okay, long hair, Samson, strong and the mighty power of God, obeying the Lord, but just got his head laying in Delilah's lap. He's stroking his hair, stroking his hairs. And he's just lulling him to sleep. Lulling him to sleep. So when she lulls him to sleep, she calls a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. And in this way, she began to bring him down and his strength left him. Judges 16, 19. You can look it up later. That's not you. It's the temptation that's common to all of us. All right, number six. Are we good? All right. To lean in means to watch out for falsehood. I mentioned error, but let me, let me just talk about falsehood. And, and it's specific here because this verse is about those that deliberately, intentionally come to lie to you, to pull you away and destroy you, and they're motivated by the devil himself. They don't even know it necessarily, and some do. But it says... So, so my point is, if you aren't leaning in, 
you can be very easily deceived by fine-sounding doctrine of men and devils. So in Matthew 7.15, it says, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ferocious wolves. Okay, now these dudes, they get an A in drama class, just so you know. A plus. They're, they're, they're deceptive. They, they're, dressed, they're dressed like, uh, like me. And they look good. Oh, I do have a wolf on my shirt. That wasn't to imply anything here. That's a gray wolf, you know, alpha, you know. Anyway, <laughs> wasn't intentional. Okay. Okay. But what you have to know is that, is, I have to make it a little bit light here today, um, is this, is that wolves, wolves are very well fed on the weak and the spindly. They're well fed on the weak and the spindly. And the weak or the spindly are vulnerable of being eaten, of getting pulled down by these lies and these false accusations. Look what it says, Paul warns. Paul warns the church, Acts 20, 29 to 32. Listen, our leaders, we care about this a lot. I care about this as a pastor of a flock. Listen, it says, I know that after I leave, Paul says, savage wolves will come in among you. The other verse, ferocious in the NIV. They will come in among you. And they'll not spare the flock. Like they'll come in among you. Not on my watch. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Be leaning in, not asleep. Okay? Remember? Three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears in my eyes about this. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Be on your guard. Be on your guard. Be aware. Be aware. Do you know what? Leaning in to the word of God yourself personally, be leaning in and listening and growing by in the word of God, the good word of God that's being fed to you, okay? Strengthens you, matures you, builds you up, and it actually makes you. Here, here, here's our heart, that you be discerning. You learn to be discerning. We're not the only discerners. You need to be learned to be discerning because maybe a month from now you're visiting somewhere else and somebody's like beacon off into your ear about something and they are speaking falsehood. You know, Pastor Dave McElhose, my pastor, our pastor, for many years pastored this church. And I, Bonnie and I, we were just new in the church. We were going to the Bible study and uh, we, were, we were only here, man, I don't know, short time, like four or five months. And I said, hey, Pastor, it would be okay if I talked to you? Yeah, absolutely, come and see me. I mean, wow, that's cool, you know. So I went to see him because I, I said I had a question for him. And I said, well, we're at this Bible study, and somebody was invited in as this guy, and this is what he's saying. And I said, is that true? Is that in the Bible? And he says, well, hold on a minute. He says, how's he saying it? And he said, well, how about you ask the Bible study leader if myself and one of our elders can come and visit the Bible study, you get permission for us to come, and we'll just sit in and listen to what the person's teaching. And I went, you would do that? Absolutely would. I said, thank you, that's amazing. So I get on the phone, would this be okay? And the Bible study leader, not the guy, says, Absolutely, that's fantastic. Come and join us. We love God. Come worship with us. Hear the word from this fellow. So at any rate, uh, they came, and uh, the teaching was done. It was open for questions. And I remember Pastor Dave, he asked one question. And I noticed the body language and the reaction of the guy that was there teaching us. He was just like, <laughs> and he got mad, and he got, to, and I'm just a baby Christian, but I saw defensiveness. I saw these things going on. And they just asked a few questions and stuff, and that was it. And uh, Pastor Dave and I met a week later, and we talked, and, and he just looked at me, and he says, he said, so, um, so my question was this to him, what did you observe from the meeting? And he just pointed me to 
the truth of it, I said, well, he got so defensive about this, and it's in the Bible. So he says, what do you think? I said, that's not good. Here's the crazy thing, okay? There's so much danger in this. That very same man, and I'll tell you today because you know the sobriety of this, that man sexually abused one of our friends because of the influence there. That's, 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 thank you, that's, that's real. That's the real thing. And these things happen. And they come by demonic force and assignment and manipulation. And man, do we ever have to watch. But my prayer is for you to lean in and for you to grow and be discerning. Me, baby Christian, knowing a little bit, went, Ah, something's not quite. You can be discerning. You can be wise. But lean in so that you can grow and be wise and and know the authentic so that you can identify the counterfeit in the process. To lean in means literally, and I'm going to wrap up here, I will get the band to come up, means to rely on, depend on God, to engage with the Lord, to seek the Lord, so that you overcome all these obstacles of your faith. All these setups, all these schemes, all the variety of things, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's those three-part those three things. It's the world, it's the, your flesh, and it's the devil. It's all this. It's all this. But as I mentioned, quoted Proverbs, see, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Lean into him. In all your ways, lean into him, and he'll make your path straight. Error, self-deception, lack of sobriety, demonic schemes, your flesh, falsehood. A lot of stuff to be aware of and be careful about. Let me just end with this. And here's the cool thing. It is so amazing. Paul goes down and he stretches over the dead teenager. Puts his arms around him. He's dead. He's not dead anymore. God is here to do that for you if you've fallen if you've fallen away, if you're hearing the appeal, Christians, about leaning in, it's not too late to lean in. Passionately. Passionately. Passionately loving God. Passionately loving people. Passionately living the gospel in your life. Passionately devoted to Passionately in his word. Passionately growing. Passionately maturing. Be changed by a living God who lives within you. But you know what it takes? Turning from the sin. It's called repenting. Repenting. Okay, I know how I got here. It says to you, if you're a believer in Christ, though a righteous man falls down, it says he gets up again. She gets up again. So today, my appeal to you, get up today. Get up today. Christ's blood was shed for you. He's, he's, his body was stretched out to cover you and your sins. Can't put it any more simple. It's not too late to lean in. I'm going to invite you to stand. I'm going to ask our prayer teams if you would make your way to the front and be here for people. Pray. I'm going to let them sing a song. I'm going to come and I'm just going to give a closing challenge and prayer.